everyone, I'm the Back Human here. I'm Buster. And this week in Toku, we're going to be discussing the slowest news week in this show's history and new episodes. That's that's literally it. Just There's we have no third we have, thing. You don't have, earn a third thing. We have free news stories and we have the new episodes. Isn't that good enough for you fucking people? That's, that's good uh, enough for me because it makes this recording session hopefully quicker. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, if it is good enough for you people, uh, please do consider supporting us by following this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to it on. If you're listening on YouTube, give us a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell to enable notifications, all that good stuff. And if you want to keep up with uh, announcements and whatnot about the show, follow us on Twitter, at the Modular Media, and join our subreddit, r slash Modular Media. And that's all the contractually obligated plugs for Modular out of the way. So, shall we get into the news? The depressing as fuck news? There's literally only one toy, and the rest is, like, actor stuff. Yeah, uh, so, uh, to start off, um, the, uh, the actress who portrayed the Yellow Ranger in Car Ranger, um, it has announced that she has been diagnosed with, uh, cancer and is currently undergoing chemotherapy, um, uh, very, very sad news. Uh, she's, of course, asking for fan support. And, uh, like, I don't have any experience with Car Ranger, but it's the, it's the same thing as back when, what was it, hashtag fight on Red One was trending. Like, I don't know this actor, but they're a part of this franchise I care about, so I support them. And even just then, it's human decency to support people who, like, you're going under hardship. Yeah, I mean, like, just fuck cancer in general. Can- cancer's a pretty shitty thing. Yeah. I don't think that's a controversial statement at all. Yeah, hopefully you don't get cancelled. I mean, if we've gotten to the point where you can get cancelled for saying fuck cancer, I, I think the entire internet should just be taken down. Yeah. Speaking of cancelling, question mark? <laughs> that's one way to transition into this. Uh, the uh, the actor who voices uh, Gage in Zenkaiger, as well as uh, one of the characters in the Ultraman anime that's on Netflix right the now. The upcoming Ultraman anime. Mm. Uh, season 2. He's voicing a character only in Season 2. Ultraman, the, the host of Ultraman Taro. Okay. Uh, well, he has announced that he is going to be taking a break or a hiatus from the entertainment industry in general, citing a declining health condition. Uh, which he doesn't specify, which is entirely okay. If if an actor wants to keep that sort of stuff private, that's their business. Um, we here at uh, This Week in Toku, though, do wish him a speedy recovery because, uh, honestly, uh, just going by the picture of him in this article, I'd never seen the guy before, but he does a really good job at voicing Gage. You'd never guess it was somebody that looks like this. Yeah, like, the, the Gage voice is good, I, though I heard his hiatus might be for more nefarious purposes, like, tab- this, this is, could entirely be false, because, you know, Japanese tabloid, uh, but, like, apparently there was, like, some rumors that he might have cheated on his wife, so that's that's a bit Ooh. of... Uh, but, again, I, I, it's near confirmed or die, that's, uh, in either of them, that's his personal business. Yeah, unless it, unless it comes out that, like, he was getting up to actual illegal shit. I yeah. don't think we're allowed to pass judgment on that sort of thing. Like, yeah. there's a there's a, there's a, there's a big difference between cheating and the kind of sexual misconduct that you cancel people for. Since we've already brought up canceling on this podcast, dang it. Uh, yeah. So I'm actually because so apparently he's stepping down from Ultraman uh, season two. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna have to get a new uh, voice actor. And also Gage, uh, he didn't actually. It was just to fast forward to today's end country. He didn't say any lines. He just did the gugugug sound effect. So yeah. Do you think and, they're like, gonna keep him like that for a little bit, or find a way to write him out of the show in the next couple episodes? If they write him out of the show, I think that would be kind of a mistake. Cause at least from my perspective, they were setting it up to be a pretty big character. So I, I think the, it's best if they either keep him silent, like just like or something, or if they get a new voice actor. Yeah, I honestly, as much as I like the performance so far, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame Toei if they chose to find a replacement. Yeah, now that's really all I got. Um, speaking of Zenkaiger, uh, yeah, we do have one little teeny weeny bit of toy news this week, and that is that uh, Bandai has announced uh, they will be doing a premium Bandai limited release of Mini Plus Zenkai Gatai series Battle Caesar Robo Two, and uh, yeah, it looks. 
pretty darn good. It, it looks exactly like Battle Caesar Robo should look. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it actually has two different heads, so you can have it be either version 1 or version 2. Uh, personally, though, I have no interest in this because I'm not much of a model kit guy. It's a cool design. Mm -hmm. I probably won't pick it up, but it's a very cool design, especially if we, what we saw it in like today's episode. Oh, yeah. If this was being sold as a pre-assembled figure, I'd probably be interested in it. Yeah. But uh, that is all the news that's fit to print this week. Like I said, slowest news week we've had on this podcast in a long time. Yeah. But uh, you want to go ahead and jump into the new releases, Buster? Sure. The High School Heroes, Episode 2, The Green Steps, The Love Triangle is Where It Leads. Uh, what did you think? Uh, I liked this episode a whole lot, but during the entire thing, I just kept getting this prevailing feeling of, wow, this is a plot that only works in Japan. I can kind of see. I mean, the, 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 that's not really a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, um, okay. So like the the whole, was... Yeah, the whole plot, like, centers high school, like, high school romance tropes in Japan specifically. Because it's all about, like, confessions and whatnot. Yeah. But, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it was, it was, our new character was uh, the Gr Mido hero. He was, he's pretty cool. Um, yeah, we got, I, got, I got a little taste of him last week, and this week I, I, I enjoyed him equally. He seems like a good boy. Yeah, I, I just like that he's like a dancer. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And and I enjoy the whole the whole little story they did with him this week with like expanding on the uh, the sisters character as well and like getting into the the whole weird popularity thing. I love how they're hinting at a thing with uh, Taisei and and how like he can't deal with a bunch of screaming girls. That was that was interesting. I think that was just like in general that they're like, isn't like the other, the blue, what was the blue's name? Uh, yeah, but then blue, like, also was annoyed by that. I think his name is Ryusei. And Ryusei. no, I, I only remember Taisei being the one to run off. I think it was supposed to be, I suppose, to, I think it was supposed to be like a subtle, oh, he's a nerd, so he doesn't know how to act around women kind of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, what other thoughts on the episode? Uh, Really cool take on uh, Comb Mask from Go Ranger. Like, that suit was super impressive. It is. Yeah, definitely a really good suit. Mm. Um, I, 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 I still think this is probably the best episode that came out. Like, <laughs> high, the high school heroes just made this really high quality, this really uh, high bar of quality of stuff, of just good show. <laughs> That's what I tried to say. Sorry, just the words are escaping me. Yeah, High School Heroes is really solid as a show, I think. My my only complaint with it is, I, I honestly, I feel like the episodes are a bit long. Like, it's not unbearable, but the episode length feels like it's about 10 minutes longer than it needs to be. Yeah, definitely. I feel like these could easily, if you want to condense them to 20 minutes, but this is supposed to be like a J-drama slot, so 40 minutes it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't talk about him last week, so I want to ask, uh, after this week's episode, how do you feel about report the, the simp character for Reporter Girl? Oh, okay, I'm trying to remember who he is. Eh, you know, he's a simp character. <laughs> That's all I got. I did uh, laugh like, my ass off when he fainted after everybody transformed. Ah, uh, I, I, cause like, sorry, just like for some, maybe it's the uniforms cause I'm very, the use of, it's just, I could bear, like I'm having a hard time trying to tell everyone apart. Hmm. Uh, well he hasn't transformed yet, but I think they're setting him up to be the pink ranger. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. which yeah, makes it even funnier when he faints a second time and falls in the empty pool. Ooh, I, for, I completely forgot about that. Oh, I hope so. God. I mean, I'm pretty sure someone got him, but like... Ooh. I mean, he didn't have a comically large band-aid on his head in the next scene, so I'm assuming he landed softly. Yeah. Um, I, I, was, I was more worried about him drowning. <laughs> what was uh, an empty pool? That was the thing. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, uh, what else? What else? Um, uh, oh, yeah, I like the I, at the end where it's like the green... When green, like, kind of, like, says, I'll protect my sister, and then, like, afterwards, like, the the the... the host of the monster goes like just like assumingly goes siscon that, that was yeah that was fucking hilarious like you were just pining after him 10 seconds ago bitch yeah and just like you know that that whole like jumping to conclusions or whatever just even though it's like clearly polite like just not uh, not what she's thinking i will say like 
uh, if I were to give like one big complaint with this episode specifically, the student council really didn't feel like they needed to be in this episode. Like they had that they had that one great scene where the the league council member confronted Taisei, but uh, other than that, it was just like they could have been cut out of this episode and it wouldn't have made much a difference. I I hope they start doing something important soon. Like have have the lead member be like a mo- a general monster going forward is something I would like to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think the whole show's written already. So uh, written yeah. Already. Um, but which, even so, like we, we even we're Americans, we, don't, we have no like yeah influence on this. But even yeah, still like you know the high school heroes remains like very high quality. Uh, very like, yeah, the suits are mm-hmm. still cool to, to get like. Back I mean it's approach. I it's mean it's a show like, that's personally. that's pining after the good old days of Go Ranger, so it makes sense that they would be very similar suits with only these slight little changes. Yeah. Apparently, like, the the stuff on the face, like, the color, like, letters, they're actually the initials of the characters. Hmm. Nice yeah, thing. I think that's, uh, I think that's something they point out during the ending feed, don't they? Hmm. I, I did, I kind of skipped the ending. <laughs> it's a, it's a passable ending. <laughs> yeah. I, I did see a bit of the dance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, it's very similar to the kind of dancing, uh, Green does in this episode, which... Honestly, they give me guy in flashbacks. Those are straight up Team Baron moves. And uh, speaking of recognizing things in this show from other shows, uh, have you noticed something familiar about the high school they're filming in? No. Is it Forze or something? I don't know about Forze, but I'm like 90% sure this is the same high school girl gun was shot in. Ooh, uh, maybe that's just like just how Japanese high schools are designed or something. Entirely possible, but I thought the courtyard and some of the uh, the overhead shots looked pretty similar. I can see uh, that. Maybe you just have PTSD or something. <laughs> You'll get over that it. Or, like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, maybe there's just this one abandoned high school in Japan that's maintained for filming TV shows. Yeah. Like, I know Wait. there's a there's a hospital in L.A. that's like that, where they keep they just keep it cleaned up. So TV shows that take place in hospitals can film there. That's w- yeah. that's where they shot Scrubs. Ah, uh, either way it works. Like, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But overall, really solid episode. Maybe a bit long in the gills, but uh, yeah, this show is chugging along fine. Yeah, probably the best show we're covering next to, at least in my opinion, next to Common Rider Saber episode forty six. Uh. I mean, you're in the end game, so. It's it's naturally going to be a little more hype than anything else on right now. Yeah, uh, this is the second to last episode of Saber. Oh, the penultimate. Yeah, the penultimate. Uh, we're getting an out. Uh, we're getting like a, a drive and ghost style epilogue episode at episode forty or what would be episode forty eight. But like the story finale, the conclusion to the story will be episode forty seven. The uh, so re- revise is going to be in forty eight. Probably. Does that uh, mean I have to watch forty eight? Uh, we'll see when the preview comes out. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna trust that you can message me that Monday morning and be like, "Yo, watch the episode." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'll make sure. So yeah, uh, episode forty six. Uh, so this actually gives us a bit more motivation for our main villain story. Yes. So basically, he much like Toma, he's also an offer, and uh, and but the one he discovered the Omniscient Tomb, which is like the big like powerful MacGuffin he's using to like destroy the world. He basically learned, dang, nothing's original. The, the writing is pointless if everything's been written. And then, like, Toma basically rebuts, yeah, nothing's original, but the people's stories, like, the, like the impact these stories still make, even if they're, like, not the most highly crafted or most original, they still resonate with us and give us friends and experiences that will last a lifetime. And I, I just thought that was super cool and powerful. Um, so the, the point of Saber is the same point as my Gokaiger analysis? Kind of? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just one of the points. I feel like there's a lot of themes in Saber, especially when you got a lot of characters with you. So that's just, I think, for Toma's story, that's mainly the point. Again, like, Toma, he doesn't really get too much development, but I think he works as a good, like, a good, like, semi-flat character. Like, where it's like, yeah, he doesn't get as much development as, say, Kota or Sento, but, like, he inspires others and helps them with, with their development. If he... Okay. Yeah, I, I can feel you on that. Yeah. He's well, also just a funny guy. He's really cool. Um, He's also just a funny man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, basically the end, the end of this episode has him like going down a hole. <laughs> I 
And so, like, now we're just going to be, like, waiting. Uh, and then next episode, we're, we're, actually, I'll discuss that one next week. Ooh. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, good episode of Saber. Uh, people are, like, like there's also, like, flag, we get flashes to everyone, like, you know, fighting the guards. And they're, like, you know, they're, they're, they're struggling. Everyone's, like, basically sacrificing themselves. And it's, like, it, it looks like we're leading to, like, a build world reset ending, which I'm honestly all for. Mm. Um, but also, there might be, like, we might get some element. Sorry, I keep comparing to other writer shows, but, like, you know, that's how it'd be. Uh, we all uh, gained some hints of uh, from the preview Blade and Guy. So, yeah, Ooh. we'll see. Uh, I'll report back next week with uh, my thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Right, guys, should I go to Zenkaiger? Yeah, let's, let's Kikai Zenkai. Kikai Senta Zenkaiger, episode 23. The triple combination in Earth's biggest battle ever! What did you think? I didn't like this episode. You didn't? No. I. Uh, this felt like a lot of retread of shit we've already done. Except for, like, the last two minutes. I can kind of see that. I didn't like the... I actually liked this episode up until, like... I, the only part I found weak about this episode was the mecha introduction. Yeah, that that was a that was a big oof because like I'm pretty it's sure not that they're CGI. It's just that they weren't used to defeat the monster when they probably should have. It's not no, it's not that they're CGI. It's that they're the most stiffly animated CGI I've seen in a Toei show in a while. Ah, I mean I, that that's part of like that could be part of it, but I also just feel like they should have been there more. Mm-hmm. Like they actually should have defeated the thing to like you know further incentivize new toys instead like of it all it almost felt like a brawn booster type thing of like oh and the toys can also de- do this so i guess we have to do this for a minute except the brawn booster was used to defeat a monster so i don't know what i'm saying yeah um yeah i can kind of see that but i do feel it was nice to get more kaito and juran moments so those good buddies yeah um also just a lot of the a lot of the angst um and like nonsensical pulling back of characters because I don't want to interfere with this thing or that thing. Like, it's okay for the first few episodes, but I feel like everybody should have found their resolve right now, with maybe the exception of Zox. Like, Zox angsting, I can still kind of see, but like Kaito and Stacy, I'm like, those guys should pr- pretty much at this point be like, nah, we've beaten the shit out of each other, except for when Yatsure, or whatever her name is, or, is around. Yeah, I, I can kind of see. I can kind of see her complaints. I still thought, like, the way Zox did it was pretty good, especially, like, kind of, like, letting Kaito find his own resolve. I thought that was well done. Um, uh, I did so enjoy we- seeing Flint in a mechanics outfit, though. That was really cute. Yeah. Um, I also like the O-Ranger and Shinkenger battle. I feel like I would have liked that more if it wasn't for the fact that I've seen so many evil Sentai duplicates fighting current rangers already with this show and also being a Gokaiger fan. Yeah, I, I think I would have liked, like, I think, yeah, I do agree. I feel like a big miss opportunity of the thing was, like, having, like, two Kaiser go into his, like, Oren and Shinkenger forms and just not just doing the finishing attacks, but just fighting them with those forms. Yeah, because, like, that was the best part of that fight, was just ha- seeing him have the brains to to counter them with the same powers. Yeah. Uh, even though it was just a finisher. Yeah. Um, trying to think if there's, uh... So, so what do you think? Is, uh, is Stacy gonna come back next episode as, like, uh, Cyborg Kaito's mom? Is that what they're doing with that l- last-minute reveal? I think they're just doing Kaito... I think they... I don't know what they're gonna do with Kaito's mom, to be honest, but I'm very interested. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's the big thing out of this episode is now... And I'll admit, I did go like, oh, shit, what's up with that? But, uh, the most notable thing about this episode is at the end they reveal, uh, that, uh... Ijirud, took me a second to remember his name, is, uh, has Kaito's uh, mom and dad in stasis pods, and he's going to use them to save Stacy's life somehow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's also notable that, like, Gage specifically asks Ijirud to save Stacy's life, even though normally they would just discard his broken body. Yeah. I, so. Again, they kind of like that, what I mentioned earlier with like his voice actor retire. Like they're setting up Gage to be a big part of like Endgame. Mm-hmm. I mean, weren't we theorizing a while back that like Gage might be the big bad? Yeah, like like the the final boss. Like we'll see, we'll see yeah. what's going on. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, just uh, just not the most. Uh, I'm just not feeling it with Sand Kaiser this week, fam, and and I don't know why. It's it's yeah. a lot of it's a lot of lot of same, you know. I I do feel like we're kind of at that moment where we kind of need to get a big status quo change. And spoiler alert: next week isn't going to offer that, as far as I know. Hmm. Next week, it feels like we're about to enter into maybe like one or two episodes of filler before we get to the big status quo change. And if the filler's fun, I'm fine with that. But like. I've seen a lot of beach episodes already, man. So y'all are gonna have to show me some really fun shit. Yeah, I mean, Zack Snyder has been fun. It just I feel like we're kind of at that moment, moment where you're teasing us with more, and we want that more right now. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's I can't think of an accurate comparison because like there's not a lot of Sentai I've seen that feel like their middle is stretched out. A lot of Sentai are either there's just nothing until the finale from the first episode on. Or there's stuff always being dribbled out to you. Like, man, the closest comparison I could probably make is uh, Shinkanger. But even then, Shinkanger was a lot more about character development at this point. Yeah, and I, and I do feel like we're kind of, like, lacking some focus episodes at the moment. I mean, we are getting them, but just not as, like, frequent. And I feel mm-hmm. like all the focus episodes are being stretched for, like, two to three characters. Yeah. And then, and again, remember, like, a, a few episodes ago, we were going, man, they're giving us a lot of shit up front. There must be a lot going on with this show. So maybe it's just they've exhausted a lot of their ideas and they're now going, oh, wait, we've got another 25 episodes left. Yeah. Until, like, the end game, so... Yeah, I got like I, I know I still like Zenkaiger, but like I feel like we're kind of at that point where it's like okay, we need a big status quo change. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's it's at that steady Eddie period. I think yeah. you call it. Yeah, oh. like remember when we thought they were gonna go to other Sentai worlds? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not it's not that it's disappointing. It's just like it's just that like there there were so many ways for the show to go, and we it just decided to kind of keep it steady. Hmm. Well, uh, I, I mean, like, it's it's not like I'm saying the show is shit now. It's just kind of stagnated. It's It's gone from, like, a weekly 9 out of 10 to, like, a 7 out of 10. Yeah. That's a bit, like, yeah, it's not terrible. It's just that I ca- we kind of need a bit of more. Mm-hmm. Especially uh, for, like, a weekly show. Yeah, but uh, speaking of weekly show, I think that is everything this week. This was a remarkably quick episode. Yeah, quicker than the 30-minute one that I kind of sped everyone through. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap up. Uh, Buster, why don't you tell the good listeners who you are and where they can find your stuff on the internet should you want them to? What's up? I'm Buster Corp. I do video essays on the internet. I just posted a video about why The Suicide Squad is pretty keno. I also do other videos, both on Toku and just cartoons and whatever else i feel like talking about i am you will see a common writer saber like full series analysis when after once i the finale is subbed because i actually have most of it written i just need to like polish it up and just have close like accurate thoughts when the finale airs uh so yeah uh stay tuned for that uh not sure if there's gonna be a video this week because i'm kind of feeling creatively burnt out but like outside of the saber stuff but like yeah that's great uh I am The Vacuuminator. You all can find me at youtube.com slash The Vacuuminator, spelled T-H-E-V-A-C-U-U-M-I-N-A-T-O-R. I do videos about toys and action figures and all kinds of fun stuff and how it relates to media blah, that I like. Um, and uh, this week, uh, tomorrow actually, I'm doing a video on action figure packaging, the current status of that side of the medium. So if you want to hear me ramble about boxes, for like 15 minutes, definitely go subscribe to my channel. Uh, Also follow me on Twitter to hear me or read me ramble about all kinds of things all the time. That's at the Vacuuminator. And follow me on Instagram at the underscore Vacuuminator for daily action figure photography. But that's going to do it for this week in Toku, folks. We know it was a shorter episode than usual, but hopefully you'll still join us back here next week to find out what happens that week in Tokusatsu.